Hey everyone, me Kevin here. I've got to come clean. I'm pretty dang nervous right now, and in this video, I'm going to give some of my suspicions of what could be going on and what could happen. In the meantime, yes, I am still trading options. I know a lot of people are wondering, Kevin, what are your latest positions? So I'll show you a couple of the latest positions. Uh, this on screen right here was after our live trading session in the course member live stream this morning where I entered a Tesla at 8.05 a.m. My actual trade went through at about 11.02 uh, Eastern time, so that's about 8.02 California uh, time. And if you take a look at what and where Tesla was at that time, you could see Tesla was substantially higher, right between these two five minute candles here, than where it ended up the day. And of course that was a short. I didn't go into the day with any positions. I created my day trades. Now, there was another trade that I also made that people wanted to know about, mostly because I think the euphoria just got a little out of hand, and that had to do with Dwack, which is now trading under DJT. I actually wrote, this is really stupid, and I entered this trade at about uh, 1247. 1247 is when I entered the trade, and then I doubled down on the trade at about 204. So let's go ahead and look at that, uh, because I started getting kind of smoked when I first went into it, uh, which I purposely, I tell everybody in my course member streams that like, when you set your first position, be prepared to double down because you're not always gonna get that perfect price going in. So I go short here, this candle. I double down at a two, oh, what is it? 247 was my double down point. Double down right between these two candles over here. And look at what this sucker does shortly after. Really, really, really incredible. Uh, now that's not to say that we can always hit it out of the park with the trades. And it's also hard to close with maximum profit and not take some gains early. But gains are gains and we're green on the day. But what does this have to do with my longer term feeling? Well, it actually has a lot to do with it. One of the reasons I'm trading more and I'm sending more signals to my stocks and site group is because I'm more heavily exposed to cash. Now, earlier I got made fun of for having a lot of exposure to this ticker FGXXX, which sounds like it's a naughty ticker symbol, but what it really is is just a money market fund that you can kind of trade into and out of. And it gives you like a 5.09% yield minus some fees. I think it's like 14 bips. Obviously, like this video is not advice for you to go into that ticker or whatever or like do your own research on what those things are. But the point is, I, I, I'm trimming because I'm building up cash. And there are a few reasons for this. Uh, number one, I wanna be crystal clear. I long-term really believe in Train America. And I actually really believe in the long-term moves of artificial intelligence, robotics, Tesla, you name it. I'm just exceptionally nervous right now about the short term. And who knows? I know people like to say, ah, uh, you know, Kevin's just being emotional or whatever. Fine. This, I have not been this level of cash since January of 2022. And everybody said the same thing then. The same comments. Everybody was making fun of me back then. Everybody's like, you're an idiot. You're going to miss out. Stonks only go up. People are literally writing that right now. Like, look at this. First of all, uh, I see this post by uh, Market Ear, which I have right here. Uh, NASDAQ now versus 1995 has played out rather well so far. Uh, and somebody right here replies, stonks only always go up. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Uh, imagine we go into overdrive is what the Market Ear is saying. Okay, there's a problem with this. And see, they have this little orange line that's kind of trending up with this. There's a problem with this. Comparing us to 1995 is a huge problem. What is the huge problem? We sold off in 2022, about three times as fast as the dot-com bubble. In other words, we went from high on the queues. So let's just look at it really quick, okay? So let's jump on over here. We went from, let's go to the week chart right here. This is Weeble, by the way. I do all my trading on here. Uh, we're going to raise the prices on Easter again for the uh, course. So if you want all those buy sell alerts, make sure you join that course, Stocks and Psychology of Money. It's at meetkevin.com. A lot of people bundling that with 
uh, the Real Estate Zero to Millionaire course or getting an event ticket. If you want to bundle, email us at staff at meetkevin.com. But uh, look at this. We dropped from a high in November of 2021 to a low uh, in about January, uh, end of December 2022. So we had about a 13 month top to bottom. Realistically, the bottom was probably over here in October. So you're probably looking more like um, a 10 month span, 10 to 13 month, 11 to 13 month sell off span, right? Now, go back to the early 2000s. I actually don't even know if we're gonna be able to get that chart here. Oh, we are, okay, great. So I want you to see the sell off in the 2000s. We did not bottom out in the 2000s until 2003, which is crazy. So I want you to mark this bottom right here for a moment. This is, you've got October of 2002 over here, and then you've got about March of 2003. You had a little bit of a double dip. I think the SPY bottomed in, in March and the NASDAQ uh, bottomed in, in October. But the point is it was, it was around this area here. Let's just give the benefit of the doubt to the argument and say the bottom was October of 22. Okay, October of 22, go to the high. October of 22, from what do we got here? That is March of 2000. So that's nine months in 2000. All 12 months in 2001. And then you didn't bottom until October of 2002. So another 10 months. That is a 31 month downtrend. What did I just say about the downtrend we had in the NASDAQ in 2022? 10 to 11, maybe 13 months. So in other words, we had crashed in the dot-com era three times as slowly as we crashed in 2022. In other words, 2022 crashed three times as fast, okay? So to compare us today and say, oh, we're just getting started on the rally makes me really nervous because I think we may have priced in gains three times as quickly on the upshot with the Nike swoosh recovery. Don't get me wrong. I still believe in the long-term Nike swoosh recovery. So if you're a really long-term investor, does this really matter? No, but there are some opportunities I think you can trade short-term uh, in ways you can hedge your portfolio. So I'm gonna talk about those in just a moment. But the point is, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm nervous about people forgetting the speed at which we recovered compared to the speed at which we fell compared to the greed and fear index. We are at a 67 on greed. On market momentum, we're at extreme greed. Uh, and, and I mean like mega extreme greed. We are at mega extreme greed on stock price strength. On breath, we're at, extra, at, at greed. Put call options, we're at greed. Mark, market volatility is neutral, sure, because like we're only going up, so volatility isn't really changing. But once we start going down, that volatility will spike right back up. This is interesting, the safe haven demand. Uh, this is a little bit more of a complicated one, junk bonds as well. You could kind of read into those yourself. But these are more of your stock-based indicators, and they're all on the side of greed. Uh, and so are junk bonds, again, Safe haven demand, you could look into that as fear. But then again, I think that one's a little skewed because yields are so high on safe havens right now. Anyway, okay, so how do you protect yourself? Okay, I wanna be very clear. First of all, I did this on purpose because I know that there are gonna be a ton of people who are just gonna like watch the first like minute of the video and go, look at this guy's hair, this guy's stressing. I'm actually not stressing at all. I'm sitting pretty in some cashola and making some moolah on short-term trades. So I'm actually having fun and I'm feeling pretty good, as well as the fact that house hack is killing it, my fintech is killing it, we're killing it on all angles. Like the team is killing it. This is actually like a great time, <laughs> like, this is fantastic. But I'm also correlating this, it's a great time with, I feel like the market's gotten a little ahead of itself and we have to keep in mind, big catalysts, it's gonna be a while before we get more earnings again. We're looking at the end of April and really like May 22nd for Nvidia earnings again. So we've still got one to two months and I think there's room for a technical sell off between now and then. Okay, so what do you do? Do you short Nvidia? No, and obviously what I'm about to say is not financial advice, but here's my opinion. My opinion is it makes sense when you can to start probably loading up on cash in areas where you don't mind trimming a little bit. In other words, if the stock runs, great, but you start putting a little bit of money on the side, fantastic. Remember, I went to cash in January of 2022. Everybody made fun of me for that. 
everybody made fun of me for that. Okay, ended up being the right thing to do. Did I play it perfectly? No, I moved into what I thought would be recession style stocks and I got smoked by being exposed to interest rate sensitive stocks. Oopsie doopsies. So I'm not saying I'm perfect, but what I was shorting ARK is a good signal. And I'm having those feelings again now. <laughs> and so again, I don't want it to happen, but I think raising a little bit of cash is not a bad idea. So you can average in cheaper when we start getting to panic again. I think we're due for like a three month panic, frankly. I, I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm setting up for it. What do I think is really cheap right now? Well, I sent an alert and I'm not gonna say exactly what the ticker is, but I sent an alert on uh, some put contracts where you can go out about 90 days right now. And I think the insurance is pretty cheap right now. You're talking 90 day contract is costing you compared to the underlying price, costing you maybe like 1.1%, 1, 1 something like that, compared to the underlying for, for eh, 90 days, 87 days, something like that. Very, very cheap protection. And a lot of these names are mega low volatility. Now, I'm gonna be clear, I'm not going short NVIDIA, though I think you could probably pull Luffa short on NVIDIA as well. I, 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 I just think NVIDIA is a great way to get smoked really fast. I think there are other companies with uh, fundamentals and technicals that are more desirable short. But I will say NVIDIA, really low volatility right now. Really low volatility. So low volatility sets up for a nice buy option time. Higher volatility sets up for a good sell option time. Like I know a lot of people are picking up sold calls on Tesla right now because volatility is up on Tesla, especially after the uh, FSD excitement that's circulating. FSD excitement, especially with a one month free trial. Guess what folks? One month from March 26th is, oh, after Q1 earnings, which come out uh, what like the early 20s for, for um, uh, Tesla. So let me see here, Tesla Q1 earnings. Uh, actually, I could be, I could just type them into here. Uh, point is, you're not going to know yet what the FSD adoption potentially is for them to give us enthusiasm during the earnings call on how much money they're gonna make because they're all gonna be in the freaking 30 day trial. So <laughs> you literally, the, the, the lack of catalyst is astounding for Tesla between now and then that are bullish. They're very bearish going forward. I think Max Payne is still ahead. Uh, and keep in mind, I didn't go into today's 6% rally with a Tesla short. I closed my Tesla short a couple weeks ago at this point. What's glorious instead is we actually went short on Tesla this morning. You saw it, it was like 11.02 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, which was nearly at the top. It was like up 6% and I'm like, yes, short. In fact, if you join the Stocks and Psychology of Money group, you can literally see me in the course member live stream this morning talking about how we got rejected twice at this line. And if we fail a breakout here, we's going down. It's my opinion. It's not financial advice. It just, it, it was right. Just like the Dwack short was right today, okay? I'm not always right. Just saying. That was good. <laughs> that was good. So... Uh, get all those alerts in the Stocks and Psychology of Money course. Uh, price goes up on Easter Sunday, so you've got some time between now and then. Just email us at staff at mekevin.com if you have questions. Okay. So, what now? Do I want to show it? See, the other thing is, people are going to be, uh, people are going to be, they're not going to believe me, and they're going to think that I'm just being the bear or whatever, but I showed this in the course member live stream this morning as well. And I'm like, guys, frankly, I do not want to be bearish on Tesla. I love Tesla. I really do. Like long term, it is a big winner. The short term does scare me a little bit. So basically, I shared this clip of I got the update. I got FSD 1231 and I put the sucker in drive. I put in an address, which I still don't have connectivity. I think Elon turned off my connectivity. My subscription is paid, but my service just died. And no matter how many times I force reset this car, I'm going to have to take it into service because I, li I literally can't get the connectivity working. I don't know what the hell's wrong, but that's okay. It's okay. Maybe that's just like the treatment the bears get. I, I don't know. And again, I don't want to be long run bearish. I still fly a Tesla flag on my house. Okay. But this morning, or sorry, it was last night. I get the update. I'm like, this is so exciting. 
And I know the car does really well on highways. It's done really well on highways since 2017. So when people post all these videos, oh, I did a hundred miles intervention free. Yeah, I know it's really good on really common roads, but we're training a neural net here. And if we want to get to FSD, like literal full self-driving, we got to start making some of these edge cases actually work. And you saw my video the other day where the sucker pulls out on a left that makes my butt pucker. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is, but today, or rather I keep saying today, but it was actually yesterday. Uh, yesterday I get the update and I'm, I'm just gonna play it. So I'll put on my little, this is, a, this is an alley. It's, it's not that hard. This is really not that hard. In fact, if you look at the bottom right corner, you could literally see the, the road is mapped, okay? So it's supposed to go either right, left, or U-turn. It's not that hard. It, it, like, it is literally mapped. It's, it knows what's there and what's to come. And yet, this is what the car decides to do when I start driving. So let's go ahead and hit play. Should be real easy now. Please turn left or right. What are you doing? No, 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 no. <laughs> so I obviously had to hit the brakes and engage here and stop because for some reason it thinks going into the parking spot is going to be how to get out of this situation. And no, it wasn't stopping to U-turn. It was accelerating into that. And for those of you who are doubtful that the car would do something so stupid on 12.3.1, uh, and I, I want to be clear, I have no short positions on Tesla right now, okay? So I, I want to be clear, it's not like I'm trying to like pump a stock or, you know, down or something like that. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, I think people are being very selective with their sharing here, which is very common. And, and I don't mind it, I don't like it. You know, we need some good news. It's a pisser when you're long Tesla and it's just bad, bad, bad news. We've had enough of this crap. But this is reality, okay? This was the first clip. Well, actually, this is the second clip that I'm about to show because I didn't film the, f the first time it happened where it drove into the parking spot. This was its second attempt. Ready? Watch this. <laughs> this is a 12.31. Come on, man. Turn. <laughs> Good. What are you doing? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is the first impression of 12.31. It's stuck in an alley. <laughs> Come on, bro. Okay. What? Okay, okay, we're gonna try again. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever, I'm, I'm just a bear! He's just a bear! It's all clickbait! No! <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> reality and clickbait are two different things. <laughs> this is just a sad reality. Oh, I don't want it. I want to be long. I want everybody to like me, but everybody's mad at me. See, that's also one of the things that's hard. Is like, when you're like, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm jaded. I think we have a correction coming. Everybody just gets mad at you. You know, it's, it's crazy. So, uh, you know, it's, it's like when I'm like, hey, Q3, Q4, it's time to go buy real estate. Guess what happens? That was the hole. That was the time to buy single family real estate. We picked up a bunch of properties with House Hack, made a bunch of extra equity for House Hack, money, value for House Hack. We proved it that we can do it at scale. You know, now, now what am I uh, I'm saying? I'm saying don't buy single family right now. People are like, oh, why are you flip flopping? You said buy family. Shit changed, bro. Guess what you buy now? Multifamily. They're freaking out. The money's coming due. I'm hearing from other big syndications, not to mention any names, I'm hearing other syndications are starting to cut on, on uh, uh, um, property expenses. Their elevators aren't working. People are getting stuck in the elevators. They're, they're cutting on building expenses because the money's coming due. You want to hear another one? This is scary too. Okay, another one. Brookfield's defaulted LA office tower. Now that's office, okay? The example I just gave is multifamily. I think there are big opportunities to buy the dip over there. A Los Angeles office building that Brookfield Asset Management Limited defaulted on is being sold for about 50% less than the outstanding debt on the tower. It's being sold for $145 million. It's at 777 South Figueroa Street. And they have about $289 million of debt on the building. So usually the first thing in real estate that gets burned is the equity and then the debtors are insulated. Well, now the debtors are getting a 50% haircut. 
I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't have all the pieces of the puzzle yet. I do not have all the pieces of the puzzle yet. And that's just what I do. I, I am transparent. I, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm transparent about my opinion. Uh, I, I think the market is wrong to say inflation doesn't matter anymore. I think the beginning of this year is concerning. Uh, and we should pay attention to it. I think that the market is wrong to assume the Federal Reserve is going to give us three great cuts. And there's this other knucklehead, just to give another example here. And this is, the, this is just the kind of stuff that I'm seeing. I'm just like, oh my God, no. No, 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 they don't understand. They don't understand. They don't understand. Uh, so just as an example, and, and I really, I mean no like hate or disregard here, but like this is the kind of stuff we're getting regularly. Okay, so what's weird, uh, okay, whatever. It's just trying to make fun of me. So the Fed is about to stop the runoff of their balance sheet fairly soon. Uh, trying to imply that like the market's going to go to the moon. Okay. They're not stopping the runoff. They are slowing the runoff. Maybe. And they said they're going to slow the runoff slowly, <laughs> like sl slower than, than previously as assumed. So they might go from like, you know, uh, uh, 80 billion of, of a runoff to like 75 and then 70. Like, nobody's gonna notice. So, again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All I could do is when I make a trade, I'm gonna send an alert to everybody in the Stocks of Psychology and Money Group. Whether I'm right or wrong, I'm gonna send the alert. When I have feelings about the market, I'm going to talk about them. When I see opportunities, I'm going to talk about them. Not every one of my trades is going to be a winner. And my goal is to give you signals so when I see something going on with the lines and I'm like, you know, losing support, here's a potential trade, maybe you can make some money. That's my only hope is maybe together we could all make some money. That's, that's my only hope. Uh, and, and lose less money. You know, uh, Warren Buffett's two most important rules of investing are number one, don't lose money. Number two, don't forget rule number one. And see, I think people idolize Warren Buffett as like the greatest stock picker in the world. When the reality is, I think Warren Buffett is actually the greatest business builder in the world. Like getting into early partnerships of great businesses, whether we're talking Ben and Jerry's, Geico, uh, you know, getting into um, NetJets, fully owning NetJets, a high quality company. I mean, they have, uh, uh, Fruit of the Loom, I think is another one they own. I mean, the brands that they own are so core American and so great. He, and, and if you read his books, you'll understand he's a big fan of finding great businesses, being in a power position to make sure the correct management is in play, and then let those managers operate. That's what he did with Bank of America in 2011. You know, preferred stocks, he's insulated first to get paid out if the company goes bankrupt. It wasn't randomly picking stocks, it's getting good partnership agreements. Smart man, really smart. The more you think about that, the more it's kind of like, oh, that's interesting. Growing businesses, interesting. Like investing in health hack. Well, that's what I'm doing, investing a lot of time in house hack. We've got, uh, we've got some really, really cool deals to look at within the next uh, few days here on the calendar, so I'm so excited about that. Obviously, I'm gonna do my hair first before I go meet some realtors. <laughs> Thanks, folks. We'll see you in the next one. Advertise these things that you told us here. I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take. Even though I'm a licensed financial advisor, licensed real estate broker, and becoming a stockbroker, this video is not personalized advice for you. It is not tax, legal, or otherwise personalized advice tailored to you. This video provides generalized perspective, information, and commentary. Any third-party content I show shall not be deemed endorsed by me. This video is not and shall never be deemed reasonably sufficient information for the purposes of evaluating a security or investment decision. Any links or promoted products are either paid affiliations or products or services we may benefit from. I also personally operate an actively managed ETF. I may personally hold or otherwise hold long or short positions in various securities, potentially including those mentioned in this video. However, I have no relationship to any issuer other than HouseHack, nor am I presently acting as a market maker. Make sure if you're considering investing in HouseHack to always read the PPM at HouseHack.com.